Happy New Year and happy comic book week one of 2017. This is Dylan Lang, uh, host of the Comic Call. Uh, I just did uh, my other podcast, um, Dylan Knows, my episode 172. So I've been doing that for a few years. This is a fairly newer one, the Comic Call. Uh, that was talking about comics also with my co-host, MJ Com. Uh, this one, though, is my own personal uh, podcast I do by myself, basically talking about what comics I bought this week. Not that long, 20, 30 minutes, depending on how many comics I buy. Um, and these are just comics that I bought that I like. Uh, there's a ton more comics at comic book stores out there in the world. If you don't know where your local comic book store is, go to your search engine, uh, type in CSLS, Comic Shop Locator Service, or type in Comic Shop Locator Service. It'll take you to a website. You type in your zip code, and it'll give you a list of all the comic book stores, probably within like a 15 to 20 mile radius of your store. Go check them out and uh, see if you like the stores or not. I just my main reason for this show is to get you out into the comic stores, buying new comics because comics come out every week, 50, uh, 52 weeks, brand new comics every week, even during the holidays, new comics come out. So my goal for this show is to try to get people to go out and buy comics by showing you some of the artwork and some of the comics that I'm interested in that come out. These are all comics that came out this week, unless I tell you otherwise, either trade paperbacks or sometimes I do double episodes when I can't do an episode uh, the week before I do double it up. But this week I was able to just do the stuff I did for this week. So these are the comics that I bought this week at my comic call. So this is my comic call. Not too much this, this time. 2017 is going to be hopefully the year that I start um, thinning my comic book uh, collection into what I buy because they're really expensive. That's the problem. You know, find a couple of really good books you like because they're between three and five dollars a pop every week. So just keep an eye on it. And you know, some of them, unfortunately, my favorite DC book is Superman, and it's bi-weekly. So I'm actually buying two episodes, a, a two issues a month. So that's six dollars a month just on superman so i gotta stop because i gotta get a new car and repairs in the house so like that we'll see but regardless i i like comics i love comics i'm gonna start thinning the herd i'm gonna start off slowly i thought i did a good job this week and i um cut out a couple of books that uh i wasn't gonna get but then uh my wife got paid as like mm, why don't i go back and get them so i went back and got them so I'm going to try, I promise. I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I am promising that. But the main point of this is to get you out to the comic book stores because there are a lot of really good comic book stores out there. For those who don't know, who might think that what they remember from the comic book stores in the, the 90s, because they, they start pop up in the 80s somewhat, but didn't really hit till the 90s. <laughs> a lot of people consider comic book stores as just being smelly, dark, creepy places with weird people. Uh, <laughs> comics and stuff like get nerdy type of people. No, it's not. Comic books are a crazy new industry. Women have become a brand new force in the comic book industry, so a lot more books are getting pushed towards them, which is great. Also, they're trying to get more socially accurate, rather. They're starting to do more comics that people of color um, sexual orientations, different sort of sexual orientations, stuff like that, and you know, just giving you all kinds of different things. So, and trying to, to do the good stuff. Now, the independents are the ones that are really good at doing that. You can find a lot of really good independent books, but you know, DC, Marvel are starting to to pick it up a little bit too, and they've been using um, various um, writers and artists who are per people of color or sexual or different or sexual orient orientations working on the comics. So. There's uh, comics are for everybody, and I'm going to keep reiterating that they are for everybody. They've got we've got family oriented ones, we got men ones for men, ones for women, ones that aren't just superheroes, ones that are like drama, romance, um, film noir esque, uh, detective ones, licensed comics. If you if you like like Back to the Future or The Peanuts or Garfield or Grumpy Cat, they got all those out there too. Um, Mask, Transformers, Star Wars, they've got all these out there. So the main reason for this podcast, as it were, is to get you to go out and buy comics. That's the only thing I want you to do is go out and buy comics. And 
investigate your local comic book store because mine is fantastic. My comic store is Cards, Comics, and Collectibles in Reisterstown, Maryland. Uh, the owner is the guy who, his name is Mark, who has created the Baltimore Comic Con. And I always feel welcomed when I go there. Him and his um, only other worker he has, Chuck. Uh, they are both really cool guys. And I always love interacting with them. And they know who I am. And I know who they are. And it's great fun. And, and it's a great store. It's really nice. It's local. But there's other great stores in my area also. I don't just go to them too much because it's convenient. It's right down the street from me. But if it wasn't, I have a myriad of stores I can go to. There's a lot of really good ones in the Maryland area. But if you're not in Maryland, check your CSLS. You'll probably find a couple really good ones in your uh, in your state. Now, another thing you need to know about me is uh, I used to work in the industry. Not as a comic book artist or writer. No, I wish I did. Uh, I worked at Diamond Comics. Diamond Comics is the only distributor of comic books in the world, basically. Uh, Steve Jeppe is the... Uh, owner of it and I worked there for about four or five years. I was a customer service rep and a brand manager. So I kind of had and I worked in a complex store and I worked in one of the diamond warehouses before also. So I sort of have a general knowledge of how the comic industry works. Um so I'm not just talking out of my ass here. Um so you know I, I have all kinds of experience in that field and I'm also a fan. So trust me on this comic books are for everybody. And I really want everybody. And, and if you don't want to go to your local comic book store, go to your, your well, not your phone so much, but a tablet, computer, whatever. You can download brand new comics every week also. Comixology is a good website to go to. There might be some other ones. DC, Marvel, I think the, on their websites you can download the new comics for that week. It's going to cost you still. I mean, you're not going to get them for free. It'll cost the same. You know, a comic costs about $3. It'll cost you $3. You have to set up an account, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but if you don't want to go to a store, you can get it downloaded to your tablet and your computer. And it looks just as good. I prefer to have what we call the floppies. Uh, my wife would prefer that I didn't because <laughs> I've got 50 to 100 boxes of comics in our basement just holding up space from my collecting for 40 plus years. Well, not 40 because I'm 43, but 30 plus years. How about that? 30 plus years of collecting. So also my voice isn't normally this gravelly. I'm going to over a cold right now. So I try to do this show once a week on Wednesdays. Um, doesn't always work. Obviously, today's Sunday when I did this. Um, but these comics came out this week. Hopefully, I'll be able to do a show on Wednesday next week of new comics come out. If not, it'll be sometime during the weekend. But not being said, I've already talked enough. This is this week's comic call. Uh, I start with DC Comics, then Marvel, and then Independence. Now, I almost didn't have any Independence this week until, as I said, I went back and said, oh, I have some money. Let's go back and buy them. So I bought some more. So I also bought another Marvel book. <clears throat> but these are what I, this is what I collect. As I said, this is just what I collect. There's a ton of other comics out there that I don't collect. I can't afford to collect them, and I don't have the desire to collect them, and I don't like – I might not like them, but you might. They also have trades at these stores. Uh, which will help you get caught up and also find stuff you've that hasn't been printed for a while, like Preacher and Watchmen and stuff like that that you've heard about. And also, a lot of stores are going to have at least two or three months' worth of comics up on the shelf. So if you have an issue four of a comic, issues one through three might still be up on the regular shelf for now. Eventually, it'll get to the back issue bin. So if you're missing issues, you can go to the back issue bin. They'll cost a little bit more than cover price. Or you can get the ones on the cover price. My store has everything, so enough being said. DC uh, has gone through this past year, 2016, a rebirth, which they say is not a retcon or a new beginning, but it's it's basically kind of fixing the DC universe. So they've had a bunch of new comics start over again and new creative teams and stuff like that. And it, it's made it me a fan of DC Comics again. I was starting to get bored with the new 52. This helped bring me back into the, the DC universe. So Rebirth was something that happened June to like August, September maybe at the latest. And then it's just been regular series been going on. But now with the new year coming, they've got a whole bunch of new Rebirth books coming out. Um, I talked a little bit about them on my Dylan No show, but Batwoman's coming up. Uh, Just League of America's coming up. Super Sons is coming up. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. Speaking of Justice League of America, my first book for this week from DC is The Adam Rebirth, number one. 
It's a one shot. The Atom does not have a regular series. Uh, the Atom is going to be in Justice League of America. The writer of this comic is Steve Orlando. He's also writing Justice League of America, so he's writing all the Rebirth books. He's going to focus on four of the characters that he's bringing into his Justice League team. And this is the first one. This is the Atom. The Atom has had an interesting history. You've had Ray Palmer, who was the Atom, and then you had um, Ryan Choi, who is the present Atom right now. So once again, trying to be diverse, you have an Asian Adam. Ray Palmer is going to be a part of it as well, but he's not going to be the Adam anymore. So he's going to be more of the mentor and Ryan Choi is the Adam. Adam is, is also appears to be wearing the same Adam costume that is in Legends of Tomorrow, the, the CW comic or, or the TV series. And you're going to notice that too. Both Marvel and DC who have consistent TV and movies out there have been rebirthing their comics and redoing their comics to focus more on their TV shows. And that's fine. Just as long they're not going to be like as long as you're not expecting a direct adaptation of the TV shows. These are different characters, different looks at it, but they're going to have similar looks. So you're going to say, "Hey, I recognize that from Legends of Tomorrow." Let me pick it up and check it out. But this is Rebirth, Adam. It's my kids. So if you hear a loud noise, it's the kids. Uh, it's written by uh, Steve Orlando with art by Andy McDonald. Um, Ryan Choi is the Adam. Um, so you know, just introducing the character. Uh, and introducing what he can become that way when he appears in Justice League of America. Let me see if I can find the Justice League of America ad because they've got ads in the comic for all the new stuff coming up. Uh, da, 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 yeah. Here's Steve Orlando's Justice League of America. There's the team he's going to have. Batman, the Ray, Black Canary, Vixen, Lobo, Killer Frost, and the Atom, which is a great team, by the way. Steve Orlando's writing it, and Ivan Reyes is doing the artwork, and it's phenomenal. I can't wait to see it. So this is the first part of that. Uh, Vixen, Killer Frost, and I want to say the Ray are all going to have Rebirth books. So uh, I highly recommend checking this out. Uh, the Adam has always been one of my favorites, and he's a little bit different than what you see in Legends of Tomorrow, and the fact that you're going to have Ray Palmer on here as well is a really good idea too. So, oh, and here's another one, a great one. Batwoman is going to be a great rebirth. Marguerite Bennett and James Tinian IV with Steve Epting artwork. Fantastic. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And here's the other one I want to show you real quick. Super Sons um, is also coming up Rebirth-wise, and this looks like a lot of fun. So that's Rebirth Adam number one came out this week. So it's a number one. It's a one-shot. Uh, it'll lead into Justice League of America. That way you can get some background on the characters, and then when Justice League of America comes out, boom, you got it. The Fall and Rise of Captain Adam number one also came out today, uh, or rather this past week. Um, Captain Adam was one of the first DC comics that I started collecting back in the 1980s. Uh, Carrie Bates was the writer. Carrie Bates comes back and is writing this with Greg Wiseman. Uh, Captain Adam is one of these characters that hasn't appeared in DC uh, Rebirth, and this doesn't have the DC Rebirth heading, so it's kind of in the new DC universe, but it's not technically a part of the Rebirth saga. It's a, it's a six-issue miniseries. Great cover, and uh, it's written by, as I said, Carrie Bates uh, and Greg Wiseman with art by Will Conrad. And um, Captain Adam has always been a very interesting character, one of the Charlton heroes that DC bought the rights to and you know brought him out along with Blue Beetle and Shade, uh, Nightshade, rather, and Peacemaker and stuff like that. So this is bringing back Captain Adam, I think, in some form or another to the DC Universe. It's not, as I said, not a rebirth. It's a miniseries. It's not going to lead into Justice League or a regular series for Captain Adam. But I'm thinking if it does well in uh, sales, they'll probably find some way to bring Captain Adam into the world. Or maybe not because this Superman looks like the new 52 Superman and not the new one. So maybe this takes place uh, before um, Rebirth. Oh, well. Regardless, I like Captain Adam. It's a six-issue miniseries. What do you got to lose? It's the first issue. Check it out. If you like it, you like it. You don't, you don't. End of story. Um, DC tends to and DC and Marvel tend to do these crossovers and big miniseries and stuff like that. Um, to drive sales and, and get people to read other books that they might not normally have crossover, stuff like that. This is the big crossover. And let's be fair again, this is basically treading on their DC uh, cinematic universe. Suicide Squad came out last year. Justice League comes out this year. 
So why not have Justice League versus Suicide Squad? This is issue number three uh, of a weekly series uh, that's going to cross over to the Justice League comic and the Suicide Squad comic. Um, but this is the main story where the two of them are going to face each other at first, and then they're going to team up to take on a different group of villains. Uh, it's written by Joshua Williamson with art by Jesus Marino and inks by Andy Owens. Um, so, uh, Suicide Squad. So you've got the Suicide Squad that was in the movies with the Justice League that's going to be in the movies also. So, you know, as I said, I don't mind the uh, bringing in connections to the cinematic universe because it's a way to draw people to come in. Because if you only watch the movies, you're like, you know what, I kind of like the comic book store then and check out the comics that, you know, have the same characters you liked and you might, you know, might like it. And that's what Free Comic Book Day does also. That's in the first weekend of May. I'll be talking about that once we get closer to that. Um, that's a way to draw people into comic book stores as well. And this is my way of trying to draw people into comic book stores as well. <clears throat> so, continuing on. <clears throat> As I said, Justice League Suicide is crossing over with the other series. This is the new episode, new issue of Justice League. This is issue number 12. Uh, it's written by uh, Tim Seeley uh, with ink by, art by uh, Christian Deuce. Now, what's interesting about this is Justice League is written by Brian Hitch. And he's taking a break, obviously, for this crossover with the Justice League and Suicide Squad. This is Max Lord, who is the main bad guy in um, the Suicide Squad. Um, Justice League series, and we're getting a, basically they call this issue Max Lord Rebirth, so we're getting a, a new taste of what the new Max Lord is in the DC Universe and what he looks like. So, so if you're a Justice League fan and you want some Justice League stuff, unfortunately it crosses over into Suicide Squad and, you know, just buy it and just keep your, your collection intact and you read it if you want to or don't read it. doesn't matter. I declared this on my Dylan No show, a comic book show that I just did about an hour ago as the best comic of the year. And I'm still sticking with it because it is still fantastic. Newest issue of Superman, number 14, has come out. And it's starting a new storyline, which I'm dying to read. Uh, it's written by Peter Tomazzi and Patrick Gleason. Uh, Artwork and this issue is by Ivan Reyes, Joe Prado. So they're not the usual creative team. Patrick Gleason, who is the co-writer on this, is usually the artist. And they usually have Doug Mankey comes in to help him out, but Ivan Reyes helped him out here. The storyline is Multiplicity, uh, part one. And we're going to have a whole bunch of different Supermans from different dimensions come in and uh, take on a bad guy. So it should be a lot of fun. This is the Superman from the Soviet Union that, that was done in the Mark Millar series, The Red Sun. And the art by Ivan Reyes is fantastic. And Peter Tomazzi and Patrick Gleason are writing the heck out of Superman. I love this series. I'm really excited uh, for more issues of it. I'm really excited for Super Sons, written by Peter Tomazzi also. And um, cannot wait to see uh, what we're going to do, what's going to happen. So uh, this series looks like it's going to a good storyline. And we're going to have quite an ending, too. So... Superman, definitely. The first trade is coming out in a couple months, I think. Hold on a second. Do they have the list of trades? January is... Nope. Yes, it is. This month, the first trade of, of Superman that collects the first like six or seven issues of this book is coming out. Pick it up. Pick it up. Run, don't walk. Pick it up. I will announce when it comes out. I'm probably not going to buy because I already got the issues. And I've already read them, but... Walk, do not run. Get that. Superman is fantastic. Another one that's sort of been surprising me. Uh, I wasn't really excited about it because I kind of got turned off from Scott Snyder's run on Batman. But Tom King took over the Batman comic and has done a really phenomenal job. I read the first story arc. I loved it. I haven't been digging the Monster Men storyline so much, but then we get into I Am Suicide, which is a great story where Batman creates his own Suicide Squad. And now we get an in-depth look at Batman and Catwoman's relationship, and I've always liked them together. Now we get Tom King's version of it. So Tom King wrote this. Its art is by um, Mitch Gerards. And um, it's part one and two, Rooftops. And it's basically details the relationship between Catwoman and Batman. Look at that. 
amazing two-page spread um, and what's going on with the two of them and their relationship in the new Rebirth saga obviously doesn't look too great, <clears throat> but it's Tom King has been doing a phenomenal job writing Batman, and this is continuing that storyline in there, and apparently it's going to continue with I Am Bane, which is the next storyline after Rooftops. So definitely pick up Batman also. Let's see, when is his trade coming out? Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, Batman Volume 1 is also coming out in January. So, again, when you pick up Superman, pick up Batman also. I highly recommend it. What is coming out in January? January we have Aquaman, which maybe I'll check because I, I lost interest in that, but maybe I'll check that out. Batman Volume 1, The Flash Volume 1, I have all the comics. I'm probably not going to buy that. Green Arrow Volume 1, maybe I'll pick up the trade because I only bought the first couple of issues. Green Lanterns is a fantastic series. That one's coming out Volume 1 also in January. Justice League was okay. That's coming out Volume 1 also. Nightwing is okay. Uh, coming out in January. And Superman come out in January. So uh, we're going to get caught up on the rebirth start this month. <clears throat> but Batman number 14 uh, is out this week. Now, what's really interesting about the, the rebirth books also is that they have multiple covers. So uh, you can choose between two different covers. Some are better than others. Um, I find the ones that I like. I only buy one of them. Uh, and what's great is Diamond has a website where you can find out what's coming out um, this week ahead of time. On Monday, they'll have it up, and you can check and see all the books that are coming out this week. And they now have all the fi uh, fingernail photos of um, of the pictures, of the covers, including the variants. So you can choose which one you want. So when you go to the comic book store, it's like, oh, I like that one. Or I saw that one. Where's the other one? And then you look behind. It's, oh, it's behind here. So you grab it from there, and you grab that one. That being said, if you don't get there on a, a, a reasonable amount of time, and there's a really, really good cover that you really, really want. You get there, and the only one that's left is this one. Well, you got to buy it anyway. This is still a good cover, but it's not the one I wanted. This is Green Lanterns number 14. I love this series also. I love the cover. It's a good cover. It's not the one I wanted, but you know what? I'll. It's a good series. It's got Jessica Cruz on it, who I love. She's got the, the Phantom Ring and her ring. She looks evil. It's fantastic. I like the cover, but it's not the cover I wanted, but you know what? I'll, 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 I'll take it because it's a great series. It's written by Sam Humphreys uh, with art by Eduardo Pansica and Ronan Cl Cliquet and Julio Ferrero and Roman Cliquet. So um, it's about the Phantom Lantern. They're, they're keeping uh, the multicolored rainbow uh, lanterns in well. So we've had a red lantern appearance. We've had uh Indigo and blue and red, stuff like that. So Green Lanterns is a fantastic book. It focuses on Simon Baz, who is Middle Eastern, Green Lantern, and Jessica Cruz, who is Spanish um, and has, uh, is afraid of um, being outside. And I, I, I had, there was one where Simon Baz put on the ring and had the same effect. This is Jessica's turn now. So I want to get this up there and hopefully it'll be the thumbnail for my, um, for this episode. I don't think it will. I like it, and I just love this series also. Fantastic. So Green Lanterns, I also highly recommend. The first trade's coming out in January. Once again, pick it up, definitely. Uh, Harley Quinn, number 11. Um, I love this mainly because Jimmy Pamiati and Amanda Connor are writing it, and I love them. Amanda Connor, I wish she'd do more artwork, but she did the cover here. Uh, the Joker's made an appearance, finally. I don't like the Joker, but... It'll be fun to see this. It's called Joker Loves Harley Part 1. So this is the first issue of them talking about that. Um, it's uh, John Timms did the artwork for this issue. Um, so Harley is not happy with the Joker, but uh, he appears to be coming back to try to win her over again. Uh, it's great, though, because uh, Harley is bisexual. And it's great to, to see a bisexual character in here in, in a great series. And Jimmy Pomiati and Amanda Connor are fantastic. And um, I love them. And uh, I highly, I, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Harley, I'm not a big fan of Harley, but uh, I like the series because of Jimmy and Amanda. So hopefully, when I go to Balmer Comic Con, they're going to be there. I can go up to them and say, hey, I love Harley, even though I hate Harley. <laughs> <clears throat> Another one that I'm probably going to drop, but maybe after the Bloodhaven storyline, is Nightwing number 12. 
again, I was like, ah, maybe I should drop it this month to start off fresh. Now it's the middle of Bloodhaven storyline. I kind of want to read what's where this is going. We'll see what happens afterwards. But it's um, Tim Seeley writer, Marcus Toe artist. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the series. It's just you know, Jim, Jim uh, Tim Seeley is a good uh, writer. Marcus Toe is a good artist, and I like I like Dick Grayson's character. It's just something about the book. You know, it just it doesn't appeal to me and uh i don't know what it is i just i i like i like the characters and i just i i don't know but uh nightwing number 12 uh bloodhaven part three that's it for the rebirth books now they're also uh, I, mean, I brought captain adam out because it's not really rebirth but i went it was the number one so i wanted to do it early on they're doing other books that aren't technically connected to rebirth that are still really good uh case in point midnighter and apollo number four the miniseries Six issues, written by Steve Orlando, who I've talked about before. Uh, Fernando Blanco looks like he's doing the artwork for this one, and it's fantastic. This is uh, gay characters from uh, The Authority. Um, and um, it's basically a, a Batman and Superman type of character who are in love with each other. Apollo and Midnighter are. And Apollo is uh, apparently being held in hell right now, and Midnighter is going through hell to save uh, his lover. So it's great to see a uh, interesting, very interesting gay character, but at the same time, Midnighter is a badass vigilante who kills people easily, whereas Apollo is like the bright sunlight who doesn't want to kill people type of thing. So, but you know, if you're, if you don't like gay people, well, you got a problem yourself, but this is a great series. Steve Orlando himself is gay writing it. So it's a great series. Midnighter is a vicious son of a bitch. And Apollo is a really sweet guy. And the two of them together, it's a great couple, one of the best combo couples out there. So check that out. Uh, Death of Hawkman number four. This is again, a six issue mini series. The main reason I got this, cause I'm a huge Adam strange fan and I have myself, uh, I've got an idea for seven Adam Strange movies that I'd love to make sometime. I'm never going to, obviously, because I just won't. But I love to pick up anything Adam Strange I can get. Um, Despair looks like he's a bad guy in this one. And then you have uh, Hawkman thrown into the mix. It's written by Mark Andreco, who's a fantastic writer. Art by Aaron Lepresti and Rodney Buscemi. And John Livesey and Norm Ratmud and Sean Parsons did the inks. So... Um, you got a whole bunch of different uh, looks on things, but I love the Adam Strange character. <coughs> Hawkman is, I can give or take one way or the other, but I, I love Adam Strange and um, one of my faves. And I uh, hope to see him uh, down the line again. Uh, but, you know, Death of, Death of Hawkman doesn't appear to have a happy ending for Hawkman, but we'll see. Maybe he'll turn to someone different. I'm just gonna get rid of the Hawkman's character. Um, that's it for DC. Uh, Marvel had a very interesting week, uh, mainly due to their new number one, one of the new number ones that came out. I, I've only got three Marvels. Oh, sorry, four Marvels this week. Um, I saw about variants. Um, how DC does too. Well, Marvel does a lot of variants also. Uh, they did something similar. I remember if it was Marvel or DC, but let me just read. Uh, US, US, U.S. Avengers number one comes out this week. U.S. Avengers is a team that covers the whole um, United States. So what did Marvel do? They did 50 variant covers, and then you had the regular covers as well. So they had a couple, like three or four. So it was like 53, 54. Actually, there's more than that because there was Puerto Rico. Go in Canada and Washington, D.C. So you probably got close to maybe 60 variant covers. Maybe 55. 55 to 60 variant covers this week for just this book. Now, why would you do that, you ask? Well, it's USA Avengers. Uh, it's the Avengers who take over the U or who will protect the USA. So you're doing your 50 states. And you have a new hero every state. I live in Maryland. So this is uh, Sam Wilson, Captain America, is the Avenger of Maryland. There's Maryland right there. I live, let me see, I live right under his crotch. I live right about there. Um, so if you want to find me, no, right about there is where I am. <laughs> um, but every state has a different hero on it. 
and then there's Washington DC, there's Puerto Rico, and because it's Deadpool, they did Deadpool in Canada, which I think is hilarious. And maybe I'll go buy that one. Like that's fucking hilarious because it's not really a part of the USA. It's Canada's part of North America, and so. <clears throat> have that that they've got this is the number one they've got the blank white cover which is a, a sketch cover that when you go to a convention you can get an artist to draw their version of what they want the cover to be so they pick a superhero or they pick all the superheroes and they, they do their cover and that's the cover for it and then they probably had a couple of the regular covers with a team on it but this is usa avengers it's a brand new avengers book a lot of different characters not used to it's written by um al ewing with art by paco medina and inks by juan vlasco um it's going to be, you know, a, a new Avengers team. There's lots of Avengers, obviously. Um, this is the uh, this is the regular cover. So that's what the regular cover looks like, and that actually has the team on it. So let's take a look at the team. We've got Red Hulk, a Captain America, female Captain America from the future, Sunspot from the New Mutants, Squirrel Girl, and some character I've never seen before. A couple characters I've never seen before. They're going to be your main characters. This person right here, codename Enigma. She's a he. She is the new. Hero, I think it was like a she. Cannonball from the New Mutants and Sunspot from the New Mutants. The Squirrel Girl is in it as well with the flying squirrels. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> so I got USA Avengers because it's had a Maryland cover and it's a number one. Uh, and it's got a unique team. So will I keep collecting it? We'll see. But USA Avengers number one came out this week. Find your state. Pick that up if you want that variant, or if you just want the regular cover. That's what the regular cover looks like. So, <clears throat> I love this series. I love the character of Kate Bishop, Hawkeye number two. Great female lead, great uh, comic. Hawkeye's been a really good series. You had the male Hawkeye written by um, oh, shoot, the guy who wrote Sex Criminals. Uh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, it'll come to me eventually. But this is written by Kelly Thompson, who's a female. Uh, art by Leonardo Romero and uh, colors by Jordi uh, Belair. Uh, but Kate Bishop is one of those great characters. Uh, Matt something or other is... I can't think of it. It's Matt something or other. It's the writer of the original Hawkeye. Um, but you know, Kate Bishop is a great character. She's a good female character, good female hero, um, and a good view of, you know, a uh, stranger in a strange land. She moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, like the original Hawkeye did. So it's kind of interesting like that. She's become like a, almost like a Jessica Jones almost. <clears throat> so definitely check it out. So. Hawkeye number two. So you'll probably be able to find Hawkeye number one somewhere on the shelf probably if you go to your local comic store if they have old issues up there you'll probably be able to do that this one i wasn't going to buy because i wasn't going to i need to cut costs and i haven't really been reading it that much but i had to pick it up because it's mark wade and her bunch of remis champions number four great team this one has um uh, asian hulk young nova young cyclops uh middle eastern Miss Marvel, Miles Morales, Black Spider-Man, and uh, female uh, synthesoid um, Visions, Visions' daughter. Um, Amadeus Cho is the name of the Asian Hulk. Uh, and it's just a bunch of young people who don't want to listen to the Avengers anymore, and they're going to do their own thing um, to save people that they want to. And um, Mark Wade is writing it. Uh... Humberto Ramos, who is, I think, underrated. A lot of people think his artwork's too cartoony. I think it fits for the series. <clears throat> and I like it. So we'll continue. And it's got Tom King's uh, uh, Daughter of Vision in it as well, which is a good character. And then uh, Gwen Poole looks like she's going to be popping up as well. So champions number four. Finally, I also talked about how great this series has been. Uh, Moon Knight number, number 10. Uh, but Jeff Lemire and Greg Smallwood. I guess Greg Smallwood, Brad Smallwood. Greg Smallwood. Uh, Moon Knight is a um, superhero who has a multiple personality disorder. And uh, he's basically like Batman. He's rich and he uh, goes out and um, fights bad guys in different costumes and has an Egyptian um, god like um, connection as well. But he's also got multiple personalities. See? That's the second type of Moon Knight we've seen. Oh, that you see the bird face one. You got this one. And there's one more of the 
a, a better superhero one, but I don't think they're showing that one right now. And then it ends with an upside down piece of artwork. But Jeff and Myers are doing a great job. Moon Knight is one of those really fascinating characters. I've got every issue so far. His trades will be coming out soon also. I highly recommend you check those out also. Now, as I said, I wasn't going to have any independence, but uh, I got some extra money. It's like, yeah, I may as well pick these up real quick. Again, I might be cutting a lot of these books out eventually, but for now, I had the money. I may as well keep collecting them until I can't or decide I shouldn't. Um, this one surprised me when I saw it on the Diamond website. And I was like, oh, maybe I should check this out. And I got read more about it. I was like, this might be interesting. It's independent. It's called Marry Me Number One. And the basic premise is a uh, superstar singer, like a Taylor Swift, Britney Spears type of character. Her life is crashing around her. And she decides to make a major change in her life when she sees a guy holding up a marry me sign in her crowd. And she asks him to come up on stage and a, she has a pastor or something nearby comes in and marries them officially. So now she just marries some guy she just saw for the first time wearing, holding a sign that says marry me. But there's a lot more to the story than that. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but that's the premise of it. So you got yourself a nice romantic comedy type of um, setup. For a comic, it's called. It's written and created by Bobby Crosby, illustrated by Remy Isu Mokhtar. So it's got kind of an anime sort of style quality to it, uh, but it's it's an interesting idea. It's more of a a character oriented comic instead of you know superheroes or whatever. So if you want something different, as I said, comics are for everyone. They have different things that they show all the time. It's not all superheroes. This is a romantic comedy about a musician who decides to marry a fan of hers in the crowd. So just who she met for the first time. So I definitely want to check this out. You should check it out too. It's from Keen Spot, number one, Marry Me. Finally, the last book today from Valiant. Uh, another really good series for women um, is uh, Faith, number seven. Jody Howell's a writer. Joe Esma, artist, and Marguerite Savage does some of the dream sequences. It's a, well, I would say slightly overweight, uh, different body type, let's just say. You know, most superheroes have the svelte, sexy body. This is a more realistic looking body, and she's a superhero, and she's badass. And um, it's a good, good fun series. Um, Valiant is doing a really, really good job um, with their with their characters and their artwork. Let's see if I can find Marguerite uh, sequence. Uh, oh, see, she's a, she's a faith is a big old geek like us. She envisions her parents as Star Trek fans. I guess there's Marguerite somewhere around here. Uh, I couldn't tell you where, but it might only be a page or two, but I can't find it right now. But, um, <clears throat> I see sequences. So I, I don't know. But definitely check that out, Faith Number 7. It's a good series as well. On that note, I'm going to end again as I started. These are books that I got, that I'm interested in, that I'm reading, I'm collecting. Uh, there are a ton more other books out there, as I showed you with Marry Me and Faith. And there's superheroes, but then there's also other books out there. There's one that I love called Animosity, about uh, how a animals have become self-aware, how they take over the world. So that's not quite your typical superhero comic. Um, so... Comics are for everyone. Go to your local comic book store. Go type in comic shop locator service in your search bar and find your and put in your zip code and find your local comic store. Go to it. If it's not good, go to another one. But just go and check it out and see what you can get. They've got trays that can get you caught up real quickly. They've got recommendations. The people who work there know their comics. And they have recommendations that you might be interested in. I mean, I go to the library. I go to bookstores. They have recommendations up there. I look at them. If it sounds like something I might like, I'll pick it up. If it isn't, I'll just ignore it. Go ahead. Uh, if you want to get caught up, as I said, new issues, they probably have a new issue section, and then they probably have a shelf that has issues from a previous three months. And then you've got the back issue bins where you've got deeper ones, 6, 10, 12 months, down the line, whatever you're missing. Trays get caught up on toys, T-shirts, sports stuff, gaming things, stuffed animals, toys, all ages section. Uh, so go find. Find your little conference. Just go check it out. You don't have to go when... It's free comic book day, which is when a lot of people go. If you like a movie you've seen or a TV show you've seen, you want to learn more about it, go to your local comic book store. Find out more about these characters and see what it's like they're like in the comics. And as I said, they've been trying to connect it more to the TV series and movies 
now in the comics. They're trying to get more people to come in and, and buy the comics, but they're keeping the story separate though. So fans who don't maybe necessarily watch the TV shows or watch the movies can still like them and, and, and like them. So go, just go. It's good reading. It's good artwork. Comic books are a lot of fun. They're good. You get a lot of number ones. You can get caught up real quickly in a lot of things. Um, talk to the people who work there. Hopefully they'll be good people. I have good people at my store. Hopefully they'll be good people and they'll get you what you want to see and find something. And sometimes you also just buy something you've never expected. Like marry me. I never expected I was going to be interested in, but you know what? It looks good to me. I'm going to check it out. So if I like it, I like it. If I don't, pff, just don't buy it anymore. So thank you very much for watching. I'll hopefully be back later this week, hopefully on Wednesday. I'll try to do a show Wednesday, but this the week gets by really quickly, and I got lots of going. It might not be till the weekend, but hopefully I'll be able to get some stuff. There should be good stuff coming out. As I said, the trades are going to start coming out for the DC Rebirth. So if you want to get caught up on those, get caught up on those. I'm starving to death, so I'm going to get some to eat. I've done two shows in a row, and I'm out of here. Read comics. Go to your local comic store. Uh, a lot of them might have specials. You can get half off uh, trade paperbacks, or you buy one, get one freeze half off 70%, 80% off of other stuff as well. Just check it out. Go to the comps. What's going to hurt? You find something, you find something. You don't, you don't. At least you'll know. See you next week.